So continuing with our Feb March 2018 P3 paper. Uh, so question six, they've given you a differential equation. They've also given you the range of values for theta and for x. And they've also given you that x is one when theta is pi upon four. And when we solve the differential equation, uh, the, uh, this, this would help figuring out, uh, help us figure out the value of the constant. That's why they always give you that uh, one particular set of values. All right, so you have to show that tan square theta is equals to two, two tan theta upon cos square theta. All right, so the way to do this is I want you for a second to think of tan square theta as tan theta square. No difference, right? Uh, now just apply power rule uh, like that we studied in AS, so power shifts and power subtracts, so two minus one is one. And then what we used to do is whatever we had inside the brackets, we used to find the differential of that. And if you want, I can just quickly skip to your uh, MF9 table as well. Um, where did it go? Because you do have the differentials given and the differential whoops, of tan x is, as you can see, sec square x. So you don't really need to remember this stuff. So the, the differential of tan x with or tan theta in this case is sec square theta. If you rearrange this, you'll have two tan theta. Instead of writing into sec square theta, I can write upon cos square theta because sec square theta is really one upon cos square theta. Uh, and hence you've shown that, uh, you've shown this, so that's fine. Now you have to solve the differential equation and calculate the value of x when theta is pi upon three, uh, giving your answer correct to three significant figures. Okay, so what is the differential equation? Let me just go ahead and copy this here so it's easier for us. So I've simply copied the information given above so that I don't have to continuously scroll. Uh, so this is the differential equation we're given and we have to solve this. And the thing with differential equations in our syllabus is that uh, there's always a very mechanical procedure you have to follow. It's really method-based, solving a differential equation. You don't really have to use uh, a lot of your head with, the, with such questions. So, um, which is unfortunate, but I guess that's the way it is. So what you first want to do, I, I want you to ensure that your D of X and D of whatever else that's given, like this D of theta in this particular case, they're on separate uh, uh, parts of the equality sign. So one's on your right hand side, one's on your left hand side, and they both are in the numerator. To do so, you can simply take d of theta here, and you can just leave d of x here, because that ensures that uh, d of theta is in the numerator, uh, d of x is in the numerator, and they're both on different si uh, uh, you know, different uh, sides of the equality sign. The next thing I want you to do is to make is to rearrange the variables in such a case that all the variables of theta are with the d theta on the right and all the variables of x are with x on the with dx rather on the left so we can just leave x here we already have two tan theta plus one now one is not really a variable of theta but if it doesn't have x then it's still fine and we can pull down your cos square theta because you want all values of theta to be there with your d theta. What do you do then? You can then put your integration, uh, integration signs and integrate on one side with respect to x and on the other side with respect to d theta. Before I actually go on to the integration, uh, this is gonna be a little tricky. You can integrate x, no problem. But integrating two tan theta plus one upon cos square theta might prove to be a little problematic. So let's just simplify that out before we go back to the equation. So I can write this as two tan theta upon cos square theta plus one upon cos square theta. Completely fine with that, right? And this helps because then what is one upon cos square theta? That is equal to sex square theta. And in your MF9 table, as you can check, you're already given the integral of sex square theta, that is tan x. So we can integrate sex square theta. That's not a problem. What could pose to be a uh, what could be a problem, and what which would actually be pretty problematic if they were just to give this out of the blue, 
would be integrating 2 tan theta upon cos square theta. However, um, this is where you have to be a little alert. So we, we want the integral to 2 tan theta upon cos square theta. Isn't that exactly what we've done in, isn't that exactly the reverse of what we've done in part one? Part one, we figured out that if you go from tan square theta, if you differentiate this, you'll get to tan theta upon cos square theta. So if you differentiate this, if you would, then hence, if you integrate this, you should get this. You should get tan square theta. So you need to be a little alert uh, in this particular part, because otherwise, if you are trying to integrate 2 tan theta upon cos square theta, well, you would have been there a while. Uh, so now this particular form is still fine because we know we can integrate this. So let's now go back to our original equation. Our original equation is x dx is equals to 2 tan theta upon cos square theta integration sign plus sec square theta. And now you simply integrate. Integral of x is x square and the power goes in the denominator is equals to um, Now we know that 2 tan theta upon cos square theta as we saw in part 1 If you differentiate tan square theta it goes to this so if you integrate it as Differentiation and integration is kind of like works in the reverse direction. You can go back to tan square theta Right did I write it correctly yeah, tan square theta Plus, and you can see sec square theta's integration is simply tan x, uh, or rather tan theta. Don't, don't, don't mix up your variables. Now, and you obviously include plus c. Now, one might think, why don't we include constants on both sides of the equation? I mean, yeah, you could, but if you take, if I had like c1 on the left and c2 on the right, I could just simply put them both in one place and sub subtract them or add them, whatever, because they, it's all going to still add or subtract or do whatever to remain, get one constant. So you just have to just just have to ensure that there's that there's one where there's one c somewhere. That's to ensure that there is a constant. And once you put in your values, that constant, uh, the value of the constant will adjust accordingly depending on where you put it, uh, and whether you just put it on your right hand side rather than putting it on both sides of the equation. Um, so basically, what what I saying, what I said was, if you put c two here. You put C1 here, that won't really make any difference because if you add two constants, your result is still a constant. So you can just take put one constant. Um, anyhow, just, just do whatever way you feel comfortable with. Um, we know that, now, now this helps us find out the constant and that's pretty much true for most differential equation, equations, uh, the questions you get for differential equations. So x is one and uh, theta, is pi upon four. So tan square pi upon four plus tan pi upon four plus C. Uh, right, let me just see, let me just pop this into my calculator and see if it simplifies. So the calculator says that uh, the value of tan pi upon four is one. So this would just be one square, which is still one. This would be one, this would be C. So C should be equals to, that's 2, and that should be 0.5 minus 2, which is, you know, minus 3 upon 2, uh, which is basically minus 1.5. Uh, because, did I do that correctly? Yeah, I think we should be good. Okay, now we, we, we get our proper um, difference, differential equation. Well, and they're not too concerned about us making a subject or anything, so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, we can, you can really just write this as, as we wrote it. It's not an issue. At times, they say that they want you to give it in a form where it's, you know, it's in the form where x, the, the different equa differential equation you solved it to get x, the expression for x in the form of theta. In that case, you would have to make x the subject isolated. You can't just leave it as x squared. But that's not the requirement here, so I don't really, I'm not really going to bother with simplifying it further. What they want us to do is to figure out the value of x when theta is pi upon 3. It's pretty simple. So x squared upon 2 is equals to tan squared pi upon 3. 
And understand what I do. Whenever I write tan square, whenever we write tan square pi upon three, we really just mean this. You take tan pi upon three and you square it. I hope there, I mean, and your calculator will tell you there's no really, really any other way to do so either. Uh, in case that was a, a misconception someone has. So let me pop this into my calculator to get, uh, I mean, so basically what would happen is you'd get a value of all of this. Let's call that value box. You take two, you multiply it with box to get X square. So let me just figure out what box is. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of using box as a variable here, but let me just figure that out by uh, uh, popping this into my calculator. Right, so you're getting this to be x squared is equal to three plus two uh, root three. And to get x, you just take whole root, which gives you, which gives you x plus minus 2.54. However, you can't simply leave it as this. And there are, I mean, it, it told you in two ways. Like it, it told you once in the question and it hinted on it another time as well. The hint was with the English. Calculate the value of x, not values. Plus minus would be values. Let's calculate the value. And to be honest, I mean, this, sound, this sounds like weird, but like it actually works. If you focus on the English of the question, you can actually tell whether you're going wrong, if you're going wrong and, or calculating too many or too few values. But the way do you have to figure this out is how they've given you the uh, range, uh, how x is valid when it's greater than zero. So obviously x can't be minus. So your, your final answer would only be plus 2.54 rounded off to three significant figures. That would be the only value uh, of x that, you know, for which, that would be your only solution basically because your negative sign doesn't work because that's less than zero. Okay. So question seven, by sketching suitable graphs show that the equation e to power x is equal to six plus e minus x has exactly one real root. Okay. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to sketch y is equals to e to power x. You're going to sketch y is equals to six plus e minus x. Uh, and the idea here is you're going to show that if they have one point of intersection. Now, if X sketching graphs, you know, especially exponentials makes you feel a little queasy, uh, you're not too confident with that. I will put the link into the, in the description for my, the video I've made about specifically on sketching uh, exponentials and that, that playlist has sketching LN and trigonometric functions as well. So you can go ahead and watch that. I'll just solve this. So you have your Y and your X value. Um, now for exponential E power two X, if you put X is zero, you'll get one. So that's it. It's Y intercept. And it kind of like goes something like this, but not, not like that bad handwriting, bad drawing, head drawing. Okay. Something like this. So e power two x, right? So for your exponential um, six plus e power minus x, uh, if you put in x is zero, you get seven, because you know e power minus e, e power zero is one, and then you add six, so you get seven. So that's what it's gonna cut. And normally, this is just drawing this for you. Like a normal, if this was a normal uh, negative power exponential, so like e power minus x will look something like this, and this would be one. Uh, well, a better, it, it, it comes very close to your, comes very close to your uh, x-axis, it never really touches your x-axis. Um, so here, what's, so the first thing you needed, you needed to correct for by the plus six was the, um, the y-intercept. The second thing you need to think of is normally an exponential, even e power minus x is defined for any value that is greater than zero. Because again, it can't touch the x-axis. If it touches the x-axis, that, that is where the y value, the e power x uh, value is equal to zero and it's not defined for that. If you have e power minus x plus six, this is greater than um, six, right? Because you, if you add six to the one side of the inequality, you will add six to the other side of the inequality. In, 
let me repeat if you add 6 to one side of the inequality you will have to add 6 to the other side of the inequality in order to uh, ensure that it, you, you don't change things right so because of that what you really should be doing you take 6 you kind of think of this as your fold x axis basically you want to draw a dotted line it's not going to be part of your actual graph but it's going to f form something exactly like this except it'll be translated it'll be shifted upwards you could say by six units so something like this uh, it goes through uh, it cuts the y-axis where um, y is seven right and you can go ahead and you can rub your uh, fake x-axis that you drew because that's not part of the graph um, this will just kind of like you go here it'll never really it, it will never really touch the line that is y is equal to six because that's kind of like your fake x axis here again if you watch the video i've made about just about graphing exponentials i hopefully that that will ensure that you're much more uh, clear about that anyhow but you have to give a statement don't forget to give a statement you have to give a statement how there's one point of intersection and because of that, you know, so one real root. You know, the marking scheme cries about this every single time this question comes because they're like, they draw the graphs, but they don't, they just leave that. They don't give us a statement as to how this shows that this particular equation has only one real root. So you have to give that evaluative statement. Verify by the calculation that this root lies between 0.5 and 1, and they probably are going to make us do iterative iteration yeah that that's what they that's what they're going to make us do okay so a very common question which is good so in case this repeats in our paper you know how to solve this okay so what I want you to do when they want you to verify that the root that the root lies between so and so values you take your equation and you shift everything to one side so e power 2x minus e power minus x minus 6 is equals to 0 right and we're yeah that, that's what it is now think of it like this if for for a, a value of x if this is equals to 0 you know if the fun let's call it the function or whatever if that equals to 0 then you know x is your root we know that so obviously if if you put in a value of x and you get a positive value it means the, the root lies below it because zero lies below it if you put in a value of x and that gives you a negative value it means you have to adjust your values of x to ensure that you increase the the output that you're getting because if the output is positive it's greater than zero hence you've overshot the particular place where you get your root if your output is negative, uh, then you've you kind of you've kind of still not reached the output where you get your root. The output should be should be zero. Uh, that's the idea. That's where whatever value of x that the input value. You put a particular input, and if you get a, get zero as your output, then the input value that was the value of x is your root. And using this, that's how you really show um, that it lies between this. Because you put this in and for one value you will get um, let's put in x is equal to one for one value you will get a positive and for one value you will get a, you know um, a negative uh, sorry you don't put this I don't know what this is equals to I'll put it in my calculator but let's do the next one as well next one is 0.5 so that this would be e1 e bar half minus half in fact minus six so let me just pop this into my calculator to figure out what we're getting. So you're getting these values. And to be honest, I don't really care uh, what calculated values you're getting. What I really care about is how this is a positive value and how this, well, let's take this, this sign into account, how this is a negative value. If one of them gives you a positive value and one of them gives you a negative value, that means the value of x, which will give an output of zero, in fact, lies between between these two values. 